It's another math day here with teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic and this one is confidence interval. So confidence interval from the word interval in there. So we are expecting a range of values for our parameter. So defining our confidence interval here, confidence interval is the interval values that predicts where the true population parameter belongs. So, meaning, if you have here confidence interval, your population parameter belongs or might be within that range of values. Because when you say interval, there will be an upper and lower values as your boundaries. So, your true population will be within that range. Because when you say population parameter, we cannot really really guess the true value of that one. That is why we are doing estimation of the true value for your population parameter. Example for the population parameter will be your population mean. So that's the commonly, commonly used population parameter or that's the commonly used in our um, studies in research. Now next, we have here confidence level. So your confidence interval goes along with the term confidence level. So when you say confidence level, this is now the degree of certainty that the true population parameter falls within the constructed confidence interval. So if you say, I've got here the confidence level of 90%, 90 that means to say that you are now 90% sure that the true population parameter lies within that range of values as your confidence interval. So that is confidence level. Now, the most commonly used confidence level are 90%, 95%, and 99%. Okay, let's try to do estimating population means using the t-distribution here. And your formula for estimating population means using the t-distribution is, with this one, we have x bar minus t times s over square root of n, and that will be our lower value. So again, since we're talking about interval here, confidence interval, so of course, we'll be needing our lower value and upper value. So this one here is our lower value. And of course, we have our upper value. The upper value will be x bar plus t times s square root over square root of n. So that becomes our upper value. And of course, within that interval, you would see your population parameter in there. So you've got there the population means. So that will be within that range of values. So we can actually put them together as one. We can have it into a single formula wherein you've got there x bar plus minus t times your s square root of n. So let's try to get to know all those information on our formula for estimating our population means. So we have here, and by the way, this refers to the confidence interval formula. So if your teacher might be mentioning about conf confidence interval formula, then that's it. Okay. So we have here where your x bar, this is our sample mean. So please know the differences between what, what is your population mean symbol and the sample mean symbol. So for this one, this is our population mean and this one is our sample mean. Next, we go for the T there. The T there is our T value. The T value from our T distribution where we have to know our level of significance and also our... Um, type of test that we're having, either we have the two-tailed test or we have the one-tailed test, so we know that one. And of course, we need our information on the DF or the degrees of freedom. So later on, we'll talk about that one. 
So let's go for S. S here is our simple standard deviation. So let me just write SD here for the standard deviation to make it short. So this is now sample standard deviation. And of course, our N here is the sample size. Okay. Now, this one here from T and then multiplying that one to our S over square root of N, that is actually what we call as the margin of error. Okay. And of course, we have this S over square root of N. This is what we call as your standard error. Okay, let's try to differentiate between the two errors there. They are not actually the same as what you can see on the formula there. They are really not the same. Because when you say margin of error, that's t times this, the s over square root of n. But when you say standard error, that is only s over square root of n. Now, when we go back to our um, normal distribution, our um, this kind of format wherein we've got the standard deviation over the square root of n, that is actually our standard deviation. I hope you can still, still recall that one. So that is also known as standard error in this one. Now moving on, let's try to differentiate between the two. When you say margin of error, this is actually the degree of error in results received from random sampling survey. Now when you say standard error, this is actually the measurement or the, it measures the preciseness of an estimate of a population mean. Okay. Now, moving on to an example, let's have this example here wherein we need to compute for the interval on which we are estimating our population mean. So, let's start with that one. So, compute the 99% confidence interval for the mean number of characters printed in a number of copies of manuscripts when a sample with size n equal to 17 produced a mean of 1.24 characters and a standard deviation of 0 0.16. So let's have the given first. So that is always the case. We have to know our given before we proceed to the computation. So first, we have the level of confidence, which is 99%. And of course, your level of confidence there, that will be um, with a level of significance equivalent value, which can be obtained from 100% minus the 99%. Of course, we'll be needing our level of significance later because we will be reading our table. And level of significance is very important. So... We have here level of significance alpha, which is equal to 100% minus 99%. So this is equal to 1%. Hold on, let me just um, erase this one. Okay, so that's equal to 1%, or our alpha there is equal to 0 0.01. Now next. We have the information on the sample size, n is equal to 17. So out from that one, because we will be needing the t there in the formula, so we will be also needing the information on the df, which is n minus 1. So since that is 17, so that will be 17 minus 1, that's going to be 16. Next, we have our mean that is coming from the sample. So that becomes our sample mean. That's the X bar. So we have that one as 1.24. And of course, we have our sample standard deviation. So that will be our S. That is equal to 0 0.16. So we have those information on the given problem. So we are now ready to get our T value because in our 
confidence interval interval formula, all we have to look is um, or use as your equation or formula, sorry for the word, that will be x bar plus minus t times s over square root of n. So let's try to use that one. That's shorter as compared to you solving that one one by one, looking for the lower value, looking for the upper value. So let's have that one single line there as your formula. So let's plug in. But before that one, let's try to look for the t because we cannot plug in here without our t value. So what do we need to know for our t? First off, we need to know your alpha. We have now the alpha, which is 0 0.01. And of course, we need information on the df, so we have that one. So since that's 99% um, confidence level, that would simply mean that we are taking our um, distribution here with a two-tailed test. So we look for two tails, and then we look for the value on 0 0.01, so this one. And then we locate our df, so this is 16, so we have this value. And then we move across, and then we go down and get their intersection, that is equal to 2.921. So that is the reason why we have the upper and lower limit because we have our t value as positive and negative. So that's it. So again, we have our x bar. So let's have this one here, 2.921. That's positive, negative. But since... We have it here already on our formula, the positive, negative, um, on your T. So, that's it. We do not touch it. We do not do anything on that one. But let's consider the value for the T as the positive 2.9768. What did I say? Sorry. It's 2.921. Sorry. Okay, next. Let's move on. I guess I'm seeing things. Sorry, on that one. Anyways, moving on. So let's try to plug in all those information there. We have all that we need. So we have x bar. x bar is 1.24. And then we have plus, minus. And then we have our t value, which is 2.921. And then we have our s, which is 0 0.16. And then we divide that one with the square root of our sample size, which is 17. So again, we try to simplify this part here and later on we'll just break that up for the plus and minus so that our life will be a lot easier. So again, we copy 1.24. So I hope you are also computing there along with me. So we have here 2.921. And then we do this one first. But if you have really a lovely and brilliant calculator there, then go ahead and do everything. So we have 0 0.16 divided by your square root of 17. That will be equal to 0 0.03. So let's try to have it until since we have here um, three decimal places. So let's consider three decimal places. But anyways, this is really dependent on your teacher on how you are um, agreeing as to when you are to stop. So we have 0 0.0388. So I'll be rounding off until the thousands place or the three decimal places there. So we have 0 0.03. And then that will be with a 9. Because we have that 8 after, so that's going to be 9. Next, we are going to multiply that up to 2.921. So multiplying that to 2.921, we have the value which is 
0 0.114. So we have this one, 1.24 plus minus, we have 0 0.114. One one four. But again, if you have the calculator that can do everything in there, then go ahead and do it. Okay, but anyways, later on, if you have their discrepancies with, um, or discrepancy with the value there on uh, 2.921 times 0 0 0.039, that would not somewhat affect on your final answer because We've agreed that we will be having that one until 100's place. So again, let's try to continue. Let's try to break this up with your upper and lower value. So we have lower value here is 124. I mean 1.24. So what's happening to me? Minus 0 0.114. So that is the first one. This is our lower value. So you may actually just have it in one go there, or you can just simply write that one in the first statement that we have in which you've got there, your mean is in the middle and your lower value is on the left side and upper value is on the right side. So we can go back to that one. So again, writing that up, we have here, this is our lower because we're breaking that up so this is our lower value and then we have that symbol there and then we have your population mean and then that symbol which is less than symbol and then we have the upper value which is 1.24 plus 0 0.114 Okay, now let's go ahead and do the math in there. So we have 1.24 minus 0 0.114. That will be equal to 1126. So we can have that one as 1.13. So we can round off to hundreds place. And then we have less than and then we have the mean in the middle. And of course, we have our upper value. So let's have 1.24 plus your 0 0.114. And that is equal to 1.354. So this would simply mean that your interval, so I, if I may go up, I can write my interval here for my confidence interval as 1.13 comma and then we have 1.35 in there. So sorry for that one. I need to erase this one because we're having it in hundreds place. So I can have it like that. So again, this is your confidence interval. We have 1.13 and then 1.35. So that would simply mean that your population mean is in between those two values, the lower value and the upper value. So that is now confidence interval. So I hope you were able to learn something today with me. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell and and be updated on my latest video. So I'll see you next in my next video. And by the way, everything will be fine as long as you know how to do it. So please take note that math really is about process. Math is about pattern. So you have to learn how to do the process. You have to learn how to um, spot the pattern and follow the pattern. So once again, this is your teacher Jenny saying thank you and have a nice day.